뭐 내가 뭐 충격받고 울고불고 해서 그런가? <웃음> Mike is an unemployed wanderer, spending the entire year idling at home, focusing only on building his physical strength. The elderly ladies next door are his loyal audience. Even his seven-year-old nephew pretends not to recognize him when he sees him. Today is Mike's mother's 70th birthday. He deliberately chose a distant hotel just to see his university classmate Jenny. Mike and Jenny were former partners in the rock climbing club. Mike once confessed his feelings to Jenny, but he received a polite rejection. They reminisced about that past confession, and Mike acted nonchalant. The entire Mike family was joyfully celebrating the birthday, with the two sons in law putting in great effort to organize the celebration for the elderly birthday star. Mike, as the biological son, seemed a bit out of place. At this moment, a man in black appeared and released a toxic gas he had created. The gas quickly spread, resulting in many pedestrians dying on the spot, and the toxic fumes soon reached the vicinity of the hotel. At this time, Everyone received a text message from the control center instructing residents to go to higher ground. People reached the rooftop but found the door tightly locked. The manager had also lost the keys, and with the lower floors filled with toxic gas, the only option was to force open the door or open it from the outside. The television news caught everyone's attention. The preliminary investigation by the authorities indicated that a chemist, desperate due to business and company disputes, Release the toxic gas as an act of revenge against society. Currently, the authorities are launching an emergency rescue operation. During this period, people can use backup gas masks in public places for self-rescue, with each mask only providing 15 minutes of protection in the toxic fog. Mike, using his wits, decided to shatter the window, climb onto the rooftop, and open the door from the outside. With agile movements, he swiftly smashed the glass into pieces. Mike's years of exercise finally proved useful as he leaped across, but as onlookers feared him might fall, they quickly pulled him back. In the midst of chaos, Mike successfully reached the opposite building. Following that, Mike utilized chalk powder as an anti-slip substance combined with a rope buckle tied around his waist, initiating a barehanded climbing mode. Although the rooftop was not yet within reach, the rope fell short. Mike had no choice but to abandon his sole safety measure. At this moment, a sculpture blocked Mike's path. He broke off a lion's tooth from it, but despite the setbacks, he miraculously ascended to the rooftop. In the split second when he opened the door, Mike became the hero who saved his entire family. The Mike family desperately called for helicopter rescue, but due to the rising toxic gas and decreasing visibility, they had to follow Jenny's command and launch an SOS distress signal. <laughs> Mike's two younger brothers brought microphone equipment. After the plea for help, the rescue team noticed the people on the rooftop. However, the helicopter could only carry a limited number of individuals, leaving only Mike and Jenny behind. Jenny felt scared and, with a turn, burst into tears. What more could Mike do? He joined in the crying. Suddenly, the helicopter returned. Just when Mike thought they were about to be rescued, the helicopter flew towards other buildings because there were more survivors there. At this point, the toxic gas had slowly risen and spread in front of them. Staying in place was equivalent to suicide. Jack and Jenny's extreme escape game officially began. They put on gas masks and armed themselves. The gas masks were already struggling to support their descent. Surprisingly, Mike replaced his with the last remaining gas mask and started running downstairs. Jenny could only climb to the rooftop, waiting and secretly cursing Mike as she waited. While venting her frustrations, she didn't expect Mike to return. It turned out he had gone downstairs to get a new gas mask. They used dumbbells to swing a rope, tossing enough weight to the rooftop of the opposite building. Jenny passed smoothly. Meanwhile, the smoke extractor in the barbecue restaurant began extracting the toxic gas from inside, directing it towards the two on the rooftop. At this moment, Mike had just climbed halfway when the toxic gas obstructed their vision. After considerable effort, Mike also successfully passed through. At this very moment, Mike's family was extremely worried. His father and two uncles arrived at the riverbank and coincidentally encountered paparazzo shooting footage with a drone in the center of the toxic gas. To obtain exclusive news, Mike's father immediately spent a considerable sum to persuade them to let him see his son. Back with Jenny and Mike, remembering their previous failure due to a lack of people, Jenny decided to employ a crowd strategy. They set up cardboard cutouts and mannequins to create the illusion of a larger group. 
Little did they expect that students from an entire class in the adjacent building were waiting for rescue, so they decided to give the survival opportunity to these students. Using props, they arranged a massive arrow. Rescue personnel quickly followed the arrow and found the tutoring class students who were successfully rescued. Mike and Jenny could only bow their heads in sorrow, but the difficulty of the escape game continued to increase. The gas station explosion accelerated the flow of toxic gas that to had it straight to the television tower. At this point, a drone found Mike and began live streaming the escape game. More and more online viewers witnessed their plight. However, in front of them, there was no way out. Toxic gas permeated everywhere, and the drone ran out of power. Finally, the two broke down, embracing each other in tears. At this critical moment, a turning point occurred. The online audience, watching the live broadcast, enthusiastically joined the rescue efforts, planning an escape route from Mike and Jenny. Jenny and Mike coordinated seamlessly, cleverly hanging a rope on the iron pipe of the building opposite. This way, Mike and Jenny only needed to cross the buildings and then climb up the tower on the other side to successfully escape the danger. Unfortunately, they found themselves suspended in midair, and the rope began to unravel, making the situation extremely perilous. Surprisingly, they landed on a protective net, entered a building, and eventually climbed the tower successfully, holding fireworks. They managed to attract the attention of the rescue team, allowing them to return safely to the secure zone. Upon arriving at the safe zone, Mike was immediately surrounded by his family, and tears flowed from his parents' eyes. Jenny also handed over her climbing buckle to Mike. At this moment, heavy rain poured down, and the toxic gas gradually dissipated. 